Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Ruskies and Reads. Today it is time to go over my August book of the month predictions. If you are new to the series of videos, every single month I come on and make some predictions as to what I feel could potentially be part of Book of the Month's curated selection of five to seven monthly books or could potentially be featured as add-on selections for the month as well. As a reminder, even though Book of the Month does tend to have a habit of doing pre-release books, so say for example in July they could potentially have an August release as one of their selections, I don't dive too deeply into the releases coming out in the next month because I feel that opens up the pool too widely and I have no idea what the criteria is is that Book of the Month uses to determine a pre-release book from a non-pre-release or like how they choose anything. Basically I have no idea what Book of the Month does at all. These are just completely for fun. As a reminder I have the books broken down into five specific categories and for each category I limit myself to up to five options. They're not always going to have five options for each category but I have limited myself to five to make sure that this is not too extremely long and to make it just a bit more challenging for myself so that I can narrow it down further. So as always we are going to start with the mystery thriller horror category and the first book that has the potential of being a book of the month selection for this category is Gone Tonight by Sarah Pacannon. Now Sarah Pacannon is probably most well known for writing books with Greer Hendricks and I have never personally read a book that was written by one without the other so I don't know their potential writing on their own but they have featured multiple books by the duo in the past and so I think that there is a high probability that they could seek to feature Sarah Pacannon in August with her newest release and this says Catherine Sterling thinks she knows her mother. Ruth Sterling is quiet, hard work, and lives for her daughter. All her life it's been just the two of them against the world but now Catherine is ready to spread her wings, move from home, and begin a new career and Ruth Sterling will do anything to prevent that from happening. Ruth Sterling thinks she knows her daughter. Catherine would never rebel, would never question anything about her mother's past or background but when Ruth's desperate quest to keep her daughter by her side begins to reveal cracks in Ruth's carefully constructed world, both mother and daughter begin a dance of deception. Alright so that definitely sounds like a complicated mother-daughter relationship where perhaps the mother has been keeping a lot of secrets to protect her daughter and it sounds like a lot of that is going to come out. I would be very interested to see what Sarah Pacana can do on her own. This is definitely one that I hope is a selection either as a monthly curated release or as an add-on for Book of the Month in the month of August. Another repeat author who has a new release coming out in August is Lisa Jewell and her new release is None of This is True. Book of the Month has featured Lisa Jewell several times whether as part of their monthly curated selections or as an add-on so it is definitely not outside the realm of possibility that she would be featured once again. I know that I am personally hoping that she is featured once again because I love seeing her name pop up in Book of the Month. This one is very intriguing to me because it has one of my newest favorite tropes in thriller suspense and that is a true crime podcast element. So this says, celebrating her 45th birthday at her local pub, popular podcaster Alex Summers crosses paths with an unassuming woman called Josie Fair. Josie, it turns out, is also celebrating her 45th birthday. A few days later, Alex and Josie bump into each other again, this time outside Alex's children's school. Josie has been listening to Alex's podcasts and thinks she might be an interesting subject for her series. She is, she tells Alex, on the cusp of great changes in her life. Josie's life appears to be strange and complicated and although Alex finds her unsettling, she can't quite resist the temptation to keep making the podcast. Slowly she starts to realize that Josie has been hiding some very dark secrets and before she knows it, Josie has inveigled her way into Alex's life and into her home. But as quickly as she arrived, Josie disappears. Only then does Alex discover that Josie has left a terrible and terrifying legacy in her wake and that Alex has become the subject of her own true crime podcast with her life and her family's lives under mortal threat. Who is Josie Fair and what has she done? So that sounds absolutely fascinating to me. It sounds like we have a podcast podcaster, a woman comes in, kind of shakes everything up, and now that podcaster is the subject of her own podcast. I'm not necessarily always into the tropes of like women behaving badly and doing shady things, but I trust Lisa Jewell and I'm willing to see what she does with this story. And so I certainly, certainly hope that it is a book of the month selection for August. And the final repeat author that I want to mention for this category is Alice Feeney's new release, Good Bad Girl. Alice Feeney definitely has been featured multiple times on book of the month. And so there's absolutely every possibility she will be featured again. Now, I personally don't don't know how I feel about Alice Feeney after the trash fire that was Daisy Darker but I actually really did enjoy rock paper scissors so maybe this one will convince me to give her another go. It says 20 years after a baby is stolen from a stroller a woman is murdered in a care home. The two crimes are somehow linked and a good bad girl may be the key to discovering the truth. Edith may have been tricked into a nursing home but at 80 years young she's planning her escape. Patience works there cleaning messes and bonding with Edith but Patience is lying to Edith about almost everything. Edith's own daughter Cleo won't speak to her and someone new is about to knock on Cleo's door and their intentions aren't good. With 
every reason to distrust each other, the woman must solve a mystery with three suspects, two murders, and one victim. If they do, they might just find out what happened to the baby who disappeared, the mother who lost her, and the connections that bind them. Good Bad Girl is a thriller in which nobody can be trusted and the twists come fast and furious. I would be very interested to see how like Alice Feeney weaves all of these different plot lines together. And so if it is a featured selection on Book of the Month, I will probably give it a try. Again, this would be a multiple repeat author for Book of the Month. So I anticipate seeing her in some form in August. Or Book of the Month also does have the habit of in the following month putting add-ons from the former month. So it could entirely be possible that Lisa Jewell and Alice Feeney are featured as add-ons in September. So we're going to see either way. I do anticipate seeing these repeat authors in some form on Book of the Month within the next couple of months. Oh, my apologies. This next one is also a repeat author, but she's one that I'm not quite familiar with. Her name is Isabel Canyas, and she has a new release called Vampires of El Norte coming out. And I believe her former book, The Hacienda, was featured on Book of the Month. So she would again be a repeat author. This is actually a vampire story. It says, as the daughter of a rancher in 1840s Mexico, Nina knows a thing or two about monsters. Her home has long been threatened by tensions with Anglo settlers from the north, but something more sinister lurks near the ranch at night, something that drains men of their blood and leaves them for dead, something that once attacked Nina nine years ago. Believing Nina dead, Nestor has been on the run from his grief ever since, moving from ranch to ranch, working as a vaquero, but no amount of drink can dispel the night terrors of sharp teeth. No woman can erase his childhood sweetheart from his mind. When the United States attacks Mexico in 1846, the two are brought abruptly together on the road to war. Nina as a curandera, a healer striving to prove her worth to her father so that he does not marry her off to a stranger, and Nestor as a member of the auxiliary cavalry of ranchers and vaqueros. But the shock of their reunion and Nina's rage at Nestor for seemingly abandoning her long ago is quickly overshadowed by the appearance of a nightmare made flesh. And unless Nina and Nestor work through their past and face the future together, neither will survive to see the dawn. So that definitely sounds like it's more in the horror genre because of the vampires. So if that sounds interesting to you, if you enjoyed the Hacienda by this author in the past, be on the lookout for this in August from Book of the Month because this definitely sounds like a good one for a Book of the Month selection. And the final one for this category that we're going to talk about today is called Hurricane Blonde by Hallie Sutton. It says a former child starlet is plunged back into the dangerous glitter of Hollywood after discovering a young actress's body in this scorching thriller about the deadly sides of both fame and family. Hollywood is a sickness. Few people understand this better than Sal Malow, progeny of Hollywood royalty and a former child star turned guide of the star's six feet under tour bus. Salma spends her days leading tourists around the star-studded avenues of Hollywood, pointing out where actresses have met spectacular or untimely ends. Salma knows better than anyone that a tragic death is the surest path to stardom. Her own sister, Tawny, dubbed the Hurricane Blonde for her off-camera antics, was murdered in the mid-90s and the case remains unsolved. Salma herself has sworn off acting and just hopes to stay out of trouble until a real dead body is discovered on her tour on the property where her sister once lived. Salma soon realizes something uncanny. It's not just that this woman is dead at her sister's address. She also looks just like her and is wearing Tawny's distinctive hair clip. When the police investigation goes nowhere, Salma has no choice but to plunge herself back into the world she left behind to search for her sister's killer, who may have just struck again. But the search for the truth will take her deep into the raw of Hollywood past and present into her family's own long buried and terrible secrets. So that actually sounds quite phenomenal. This is one that I had never heard of before I was doing research for this video and I am truly hoping, truly hoping that this is a featured selection or add-on option for Book of the Month in August. So I definitely had to mention it here as a potential Book of the Month option because I'm kind of like manifesting it at this point. I really, really enjoy the sound of this and so I really want to see what she can do with this one. Moving on into the literary slash contemporary fiction category, there were actually quite a lot of contenders for this. So I definitely had to narrow it down to five and I do think I have some pretty strong contenders. The first one that I want to start with is The Heaven and Earth Grocery Store by James McBride. In 1972, when workers in Pottstown, Pennsylvania were digging the foundations for a new development, the last thing they expected to find was a skeleton at the bottom of a well. Who the skeleton was and how it got there were two of the long-held secrets kept by the residents of Chicken Hill, the dilapidated neighborhood where immigrant Jews and African Americans lived side by side and shared ambitions and sorrows. Chicken Hill was where Mashi and Chona Ludlow lived, when Mashi integrated his theater and where Chona ran the Heaven and Earth grocery store. When the state came looking for a deaf boy to institutionalize him, it was Chona and Nate Timblin, the black janitor at Mashi's theater and the unofficial leader of the black community on Chicken Hill, who worked together to keep the boys safe. As these character stories overlap and deepen, it becomes clear how much the people who live on the margins of white Christian America struggle and what they must do to survive when the truth is finally revealed about what happened on Chicken Hill and the part of the town's white establishment played in it. Bride shows us that even in dark times, it is love and community, heaven and earth that sustain us. So that sounds actually really deep, really poignant. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of talk about race and injustice. And there's definitely also going to be a mystery involved with trying to figure out who the skeleton belongs to. So this one has been going around. It's been getting quite a lot of buzz. And so I do think that this is a strong contender for the literary contemporary fiction category on Book of the Month. Another very strong contender is Family Lore by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is Elizabeth Acevedo's adult debut. She typically writes YA contemporary fiction and if I remember correctly a lot of her books are written in prose. I don't know if that's going to be the same with this one but 
This of course is on a lot of people's radar for the month of August because of her popularity as a YA author and so I really do think that Book of the Month could feature her as a literary contemporary fiction contender. Floor has a gift. She can predict to the day when someone will die so when she decides she wants a living wake, a party to bring her family and community together to celebrate the long life she's led, her sisters are surprised. Has Floor foreseen her own death or someone else's? She refuses to tell her sisters, Matilda, Pastora, and Camilla. But Floor isn't the only person with secrets. Matilda has tried for decades to cover the extent of her husband's infidelity but she must now confront the true state of her marriage. Pastora is typically the most reserved sister but Flora's wake motivates this driven woman to solve her sibling's problems. Camilla is the youngest sibling and often the forgotten one but she's decided she no longer wants to be taken for granted. And the next generation, cousins Ona and Yadi, face tumult of their own. Yadi is reuniting with her first love who was imprisoned when they were both still kids. Ona is married for years and attempting to conceive. Ona must decide whether it's worth it to keep trying to have a child and the anthropology research that's begun to fill lackluster. Spending the three days prior to the wake, family lore traces the lives of the Marte women weaving together past and present Santo Domingo in New York City, told with Elizabeth Acevedo's inimitable and incandescent voice. This is an indelible portrait of sisters and cousins, aunts and nieces, one family's journey through their history, helping them better navigate all that is to come. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be a poignant, hard-hitting family drama. So if you have really enjoyed Elizabeth Acevedo in the past and you were interested to see what she could do in the adult age range, I would say definitely keep your eye out for this one in August. This next one is another repeat author that is a strong contender. It is Angie Kim's newest release, Happiness Falls. She wrote Miracle Creek, which was a very strong and interesting legal thriller and so I'm certainly interested to read more from her in the future so I would love to see this one become a pick on book of the month. It says we didn't call the police right away. Those are the first words of this extraordinary novel about a biracial Korean American family in Virginia whose lives are repented when their beloved father and husband goes missing. Mia, the irreverent hyper analytical 20 year old daughter has an explanation for everything which is why she isn't initially concerned when her father and younger brother Eugene don't return from a walk in a nearby park. But by the time Mia's brother runs through the front door bloody and alone it becomes clear that the father in this tight-knit family is missing and the only witness is Eugene who has the rare genetic condition angel man syndrome and cannot speak. What follows is both a ticking clock investigation into the whereabouts of a father and an emotionally rich portrait of a family whose personal secrets just may be at the heart of his disappearance. Full of shocking twists and fascinating questions of love, language, race, and human connection, Happiness Falls is a mystery, a family drama, and a novel of profound philosophical inquiry. With all the powerful storytelling she brought to her award-winning debut Miracle Creek, Angie Kim turns the missing person story into something wholly original creating an indelible tale of a family who must go to remarkable lengths to truly understand one another. I'm sold. That sounds absolutely phenomenal. Mystery, family drama, secrets, intrigue. I will be adding this to my box so fast if it is in fact an August selection. Another one that caught my attention and I feel could be a great option for the contemporary fiction selection is The Year of Second Chances by Laura Avery. It says Robin Lindstrom spent her first year as a young widow cocooned in the safe haven of the Minnesota farmhouse she'd once shared with Gabe, the love of her life, the man she thought she'd be with till the end. But her world is turned upside down when she receives an email informing her that her late husband has enrolled in something called Flutter, a dating service. The app subscription lasts 12 months use it. Gabe's message from the grave reads, I don't like the thought of you being alone. If you won't do it for yourself, do it as a favor to me, please. After 12 months of pulling herself together, Robin's fragile equilibrium is knocked sideways. How could Gabe, of all people, be asking her to venture out into the murky waters of 21st century online dating? He set all of this up to go into effect a year after his death, which means it was basically his last request. So Robin tentatively takes steps to put herself out into the world once more, even if it means awkward outings at bowling alleys, club hopping with DJs she meets online, and stammering conversations at dinner. Along the way, she's surprised to find herself meeting new people, trying new things and even getting to know a new version of herself because everyone deserves a second chance at love and loving life. I really really enjoy stories that follow people after grief and learning to kind of pick themselves up and live again when they are no longer with the people that they thought were going to be with them forever and I feel like this could be very tender very heartwarming and I would be extremely interested to see this as a book of the month selection so this is one that I feel could be a strong contender for August contemporary fiction. And the fifth and final book that I want to talk about for this category is The One That Got Away by Charlotte Rickson. This says it's good for fans of Jill Santapolo and Colleen Hoover which really really intrigued me. It says two years together 20 years apart one day to change their story. In the year 2000 Benjamin's world is turned upside down the night he meets Clara. Instinctively he knows they are meant for each other but a devastating mistake on their last night at university will take their lives in very different directions. 20 years later Clara has a high profile job and a handsome husband but despite the trappings of success she isn't happy and she knows that a piece of her heart still belongs to Benjamin the boy she fell in love with years earlier. The boy whose life she fears she ruined. When a bombing is reported in the city where they first 
met. Clara is pulled back to a place she tries not to remember and the first love she could never forget. Searching for Benjamin, Clara is forced to confront the events that tore them apart. But is it too late to put right what went wrong? Across the miles and spanning decades, Charlotte Rickson's The One That Got Away is a sweeping poignant story about growing up, growing apart, the people who first steal our hearts, and the surprising winding roads that love can take us on. So this definitely sounds like it could be a second chance romance. The reason why I didn't include it in the romance category is it also sounds like there's a lot more going on than just the romance and so I put it more firmly in the contemporary fiction category. This sounds beautiful and I think that it would be a really good contender for the contemporary fiction category for book of the month for August. All right now moving into the historical fiction category I have four books to talk to you about today starting with California Golden by Melanie Benjamin. This is set in Southern California in the 1960s. Endless sunny days surfing in Malibu followed by glittering neon lights at Whiskey A Go Go. In an era when women are expected to be housewives Carol Donnelly is breaking the mold as a legendary female surfer struggling to compete in a male dominated sport and her daughters Mindy and Ginger bear the weight of her unconventional lifestyle. The Donnelly sisters grew up enduring their mother's absence physically when she's at the beach and emotionally the rare times she's at home. To escape questions about Carol's whereabouts and chase their mom's elusive affection they cut school to spend their days in the surf. From her first time on board Mindy shows a natural talent. Ginger two years younger feels out of place in the water. As they grow up and their lives diverge Mindy and Ginger's relationship ebbs and flows. Mindy finds herself swept up in celebrity complete with beachside love affairs, parties at the Playboy Club, and USO tours to Vietnam. Meanwhile Ginger desperate for a community of her own is tugged into the vibrant counterculture of drugs and cults. Through it all their sense of duty to each other survives as the girls are forever connected by the emotional damage they carry from their unorthodox childhood. A gripping emotional story set at the time when mothers were expected to be Donna Reed not Gidget. California Golden is an unforgettable novel about three women living in a society that was shifting as tempestuously as the breaking waves. I'm really enjoying the vibes that this is giving me. This is giving me very Taylor Jenkins Reid vibes and I think this would be something that's right up my alley. Considering it sounds like a very character driven family drama I am here for it. So I really think that this could be a good one for the historical fiction category. Emma Donahue's newest release is coming out in August and it's called Learned by Heart and I believe she is a repeat author for Book of the Month. I also know that Emma Donahue is a pretty well respected author even though I personally have never read anything from her before. There's just a very short blurb about this one. It says drawing on years of investigation and Ann Lister's five million word secret journal Learned by Heart is the long buried love story of Eliza Rain, an orphan heiress banished from India to England at age six, and Anne Lister, a brilliant troublesome tomboy who meet at the manor school for young ladies in York in 1805 when they are both 14. It says a heartbreakingly gorgeous novel based on the true story of two girls who fall secretly deeply and dangerously in love at a boarding school in the 19th century and that just sounds beautiful to me. So I really think this could be a very strong contender for historical fiction for book of the month in August. And then the final one that I want to talk to you about for historical fiction, I apologize I only had three not four I misspoke earlier but the final one is called Queen of the Valley by Lorena Hughes. This is actually set in Colombia in the 1920s so that is a really interesting and different setting. Driven and recklessly daring Martin Sabater follows his lifelong dream of owning a cacao plantation but on the night of a spectacular gala he disappears and is never seen again. Now his hacienda is a budding Catholic hospital saving lives during an emergency epidemic and novice nun Sor Curry is there to uncover the truth behind Martin's disappearance but her real identity and her past with the heart breakingly charismatic Martin will put far more than her perilous search at risk. A professional photographer Lucas Ferreira is Martin's best friend since boyhood. He has his own reasons for helping the determined alluring nun but what this reserved man won't reveal about his thwarted dreams and unrequited passion could prove key to the past or a lethal trap. Martin was head nurse Sor Camilla's only love until an unfortunate mistake changed the course of her life forever. Now Martin's home is an unexpected chance for her Lucas and Puri to set that past right but with their secrets unearthing explosive memories and wrenching lies can they survive the truth about Martin and the consequences that will forever alter their destinies. So this is definitely historical in nature but it sounds like it's a mystery primarily at its core and possibly even a love story. I think it would be an interesting contender to see for historical fiction. All right moving on into the romance category I really only have two that I want to talk to you about today and quite honestly neither one are actually screaming strong contenders to me but they are possibilities. One has been getting quite a great deal of buzz and one is from a repeat author so I feel like they are worth mentioning. The first is called The Hundred Loves of Juliet by Evelyn Skye. Now if I understand this correctly there could be a slight speculative element to this but I didn't feel it was enough to warrant putting this in like the fantasy magical realism category so I did place it firmly in romance. It says when Helene was young she dreamed of the perfect man and filled her notebooks with stories about him and about love in its purest form but after a messy divorce she has let go of such naive fantasies. She has moved to a small town in Alaska where she is ready to write her novels and build a new life without romance but fate has other plans. Helene soon meets Sebastien Montague a handsome fisherman who is her invented hero made flesh down to the most idiosyncratic detail but how can a man she created possibly exist in the real world? So that's kind of where like the speculative element comes in. When Helene tries to discover the truth behind his existence Sebastian is determined 
to keep that truth from her. For he is a man scarred by serial tragedy, hiding a secret that has broken his heart time and time again. Yet the shadows of the past emerge, endangering Helene and Sebastian's future before it even begins. And it becomes clear that it won't be easy to forge a new ending into the greatest love story of all time. So I personally actually feel like that sounds beautiful. And I also love, love, love stories set against a backdrop of Alaska. So I'm very much intrigued by the story of this one. And I would personally love to see it as a romance contender for Book of the Month in August. I'm not sure necessarily how strong I feel about it though, but I would love to see it. And the second option I wanted to talk to you about is Taste Like Shakar by Nisha Sharma. I believe the first book in this like companion romance series was called Dating Dr. Dill and I do believe that it was featured on Book of the Month which is why I wanted to mention it here. It says Bobby Carr is determined to plan a celebration to remember for her best friend's wedding but she has two problems that are getting in her way. One, the egotistical and irritatingly sexy chef Benjamin Bunty Pata is supposed to help her with the menu since he's the groom's best friend. And two, someone is trying to sabotage the wedding. With aspirations of taking over her family's event planning business, Bobby knows that one misstep in managing the Karina Man and Prem Verma party, along with the other weddings on her plate, will only give her uncle another reason not to promote her. That means Karina's big day and Bobby's future career are on the line. Bunty will do anything for his best friend, even though he has his hands full in finding a new location for his next restaurant, while also playing mediator between his brother and father, the celebrated Nan King. When Prem asks Bunty to help with the wedding menu, he agrees, especially since it puts him in close proximity to the delicious Bobby Carr. When a mystery shoddy saboteur starts leaving threatening notes and canceling cake orders, Bundy and Bobby have no choice but to call a truce and face the volatile attraction they have for each other. Through masquerade fundraisers and a joint bachelor bachelorette trip to Vegas, this chef and wedding planner explore their growing connection all while trying to plan a wedding at Messina Vineyards in a time crunch. But once the shoddy saboteur is caught and the wedding is over, will their love story have a happily ever after? So it just sounds like a cute, fun, hate to love type of romance. Like I said, I believe her first novel, Dating Dr. Dill, was featured on Book of the Month. So it is a possibility that this could be featured as a main selection or an add-on selection for the romance category in August. All right, and the final category that I want to talk to you about today is the fantasy slash magical realism slash sci-fi, and I have three to talk to you about today. This first one that I'm going to mention seems to be everybody's top pick based on clues that Book of the Month has put out. It's called Shark Heart, A Love Story by Emily Hobbit. For Lewis and Ren, their first year of marriage is also their last. A few weeks after their wedding, Lewis receives a rare diagnosis. He will retain most of his consciousness, memories, and intellect, but his physical body will gradually turn into a great white shark. As Lewis develops the features and impulses of one of the most predatory creatures in the ocean, his complicated artist's heart struggles to make peace with his unfulfilled dreams. At first, Ren internally resists her husband's fate. Is there a way for them to be together after Lewis changes? Then a glimpse of Lewis's developing carnivorous nature activates long repressed memories for Ren, whose story vacillates between her childhood living on a houseboat in Oklahoma, her time with a college ex-girlfriend, and her unusual friendship with a woman pregnant with twin birds. Woven throughout this bold novel is the story of Ren's mother Angela, who becomes pregnant with Ren at 15 in an abusive relationship amidst her parents' crumbling marriage. In the present, all of Ren's grief eventually collides and she is forced to make an impossible choice. A sweeping love story that is at once lyrical and funny, airy and visceral, Shark Heart is an unforgettable, gorgeous novel about life's perennial questions, the fragility of memory, finding joy amidst grief, and creating a meaningful life. This daring debut marks the arrival of a wildly talented new writer abounding with originality, humor, and heart. So we have a man who is going to turn into a shark, we have a woman who is pregnant with twin birds. There are definitely a lot of very weird aspects to the story that aren't personally ringing any bells for me, so I don't think I will be picking this one up. But it also sounds like there's going to be some poignant messages and themes throughout the story as well. So if this sounds like something that is of interest to you, please be on the lookout for it in August because like I said, a lot of people seem to believe that this is going to be one of the main selections for sure for August based on clues that Book of the Month has put out. And then on the theme of sea creatures, we have a science fiction coming out in August that is getting a lot of buzz. It's called Whale Fall by Daniel Krauss. It's actually kind of considered more of a scientific thriller, but I did place it in the sci-fi category because again, it's a little bit weird. It says Jay Gardner has given himself a fool's errand. Find the remains of his deceased father in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Monastery Beach. He knows it's a long shot, but Jay feels it's the only way for him to lift the weight of guilt he has carried since his dad's death by suicide the previous year. The dive begins well enough, but the sudden appearance of a giant squid puts Jay in very real jeopardy, made infinitely worse by the arrival of a sperm whale looking to feed. Suddenly, Jay is caught in the squid's tentacles and drawn into the whale's mouth, where he is pulled into the first of its four stomachs. He quickly realizes he has only one hour before his oxygen tank runs out, one hour to defeat his demons and escape the belly of a whale. So it's literally about a man who is swallowed by a whale and what it's going to take for him to get out and survive. So apparently it's supposed to be very like scientifically accurate. I'm not entirely sure, but I definitely feel like this falls more into like the science fiction type of category because I'm not entirely sure how likely I think that the situation is to happen, but it has been going around. I've heard a lot of people talk about it. So this could be a very interesting book of the month selection for the month of August. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about in this video is actually Alice Hoffman's newest release called The Invisible Hour. Alice Hoffman has been featured multiple times on Book of the Month, primarily her 
practical magic series and magic lessons and things of that nature. So it is certainly not outside the realm of possibility that she would be featured again. This says one brilliant June day when Mia Jacob can no longer see a way to survive, the power of words saves her. The Scarlet Letter was written almost 200 years earlier. But it seems to tell the story of Mia's mother Ivy and their life inside the community, an oppressive cult in Western Massachusetts where contact with the outside world is forbidden. But how could this be? How could Nathaniel Hawthorne have so perfectly captured the pain and loss that Mia carries inside her? Through a journey of heartbreak, love, and time, Mia must abandon the rules she was raised with at the community. As she does, she realizes that reading can transport you to other worlds or bring them to you and that readers and writers affect one another in mysterious ways. She learns that time is more fluid than she can imagine and that love is stronger than any chains that bind you. As a girl, Mia fell in love with the book. Now as a young woman, she falls in love with a brilliant writer as she makes her way back in time. But what if Nathaniel Hawthorne never wrote The Scarlet Letter? And what if Mia Jacob never found it on the day she planned to die? This is the story of one woman's dream. For a little while, it came true. So this actually sounds like it's going to play with time a little bit. So if you are a fan of Alice Hoffman and her previous work, you may want to keep your eye out for this one in August. All right, everyone, that is it. Those are all the books that I think could be potential front runners for monthly curated selections or add-on selections in the month of August. As always, if there are books that you think are more likely to be part of Book of the Month selections for August, please leave those down below. Or if you made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling very chatty, go ahead and leave me a whale emoji for Whale Fall. That is definitely one of the more interesting books that I talked about today. That were a shark because shark heart certainly sounds extremely weird. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you would like to connect with me on any other platforms, I always leave my Goodreads Instagram and Instagram threads down below and I would love to chat with you on those platforms as well. In terms of booktube, I had to post one video a week, sometimes two, depending on what I could do. And I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos. Bye guys. Thank you.